I think uh, deserves attention and will be a could portend um, we could see the the beginning of some type of filibuster reform in the coming months as a function of this. It's certainly part of the strategy. The United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia circuit is perhaps the second most powerful, maybe not even perhaps, is the second most powerful court in the country, short of the Supreme Court. It is where such things have happened that President Obama's recess appointments to the National Labor Relations Board were found unconstitutional because the Senate wasn't really in recess. It is where we have seen a bevy of rulings that have curtailed the, the power of the EPA to do things like regulate air pollution across state lines. Uh, it has been a place where we've seen all sorts of corporate uh, rulings. And on this court, there have been three vacancies. Now, the way this court works, it's now, uh, as of last week, Sri 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 Vansen. Can you pronounce that for me, Michael? No? Sorry, no, I don't try. have that one for you. Uh, was just successfully um, confirmed to this court. It's now made up of four Democratic uh, appointees and four Republican appointees. It should be an 11 person court. There are six sort of emeriti judges who sit on that court and occasionally fill in. Five of them were appointed by Republicans. So today, the news that President Obama will announce three nominees simultaneously to this court. Three people who, from what I have read, are good nominees from a liberal perspective. Supposedly, they will be Cornelia T.L. Pillard, David Frederick, and Patricia Ann Millett. Pillard was an ACLU lawyer, an NAACP Legal Defense and Education Fund uh, attorney. Frederick served as the law clerk to Byron White, worked in the Justice Department in the Solicitor General's office. Millett was also in the Solicitor General's office for a decade. She now is in private practice, um, in the appellate practice of a uh, Washington law firm. All of these nominees are going to hit the Senate Judiciary Committee simultaneously. This is essentially an attempt either to fill these uh, vacancies or to force a showdown over the filibuster. I think it was last week, Harry Reid, maybe it was two weeks ago, Harry Reid claimed that he was willing to revisit filibuster reform as chuckles ensue and would do so perhaps through the nuclear option, which involves uh, a parliamentary tactic trick in many respects uh, that That would basically call for the parliamentarian to turn his back and vote to change the rules while the Senate is in session on a 51-person vote. It is dubious, but in many respects it's unprecedented. This is something that you generally do on the first session day of the Senate. Now, I think, if I'm not mistaken, and, and I may be mistaken about this, but I know Harry Reid had planned to keep the first day open for an extended period of time through a deal that he had made with the Republicans. I don't know if that's still in effect, but again, it's a parliamentary uh, trick. 
Jeff Merkley was saying the other day that he thinks something's going to happen. So this, uh, this appointment is these uh, nominees is, seeing in, is being seen in that context. Supposedly, Reid has said privately that if the Republicans filibuster, the Labor Secretary nominee, the EPA head, and the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau head, he is willing to go nuclear. And the idea is that obstruction on these three justices will provide the political air cover for that. So keep your eyes on this. These positions are crucial. President Obama has many, many vacancies, um, particularly on a district court level. What's that? I think it's on an appellate level, I thought. On an appellate level, there is still basically a mixed record. Um, also note that the Senate Republicans were threatening to change the makeup of this circuit court from 11 people to 8 people, which is sort of like a reverse court packing scheme. So instead of uh, expanding it to 16 and appointing 7 uh, or 8 new liberal judges, they would simply shrink the size of it so that the Republican dominance on this court could remain. Uh, that's not going anywhere, but it's interesting to see how this is playing out. 